a minute. Yeah, let's uh, let's jump right in. Um, let me pull up the document that I emailed to everybody. We can just kind of go through it that way. Can you guys see that? Yep. Let me just let Tom Carson in here. Okay. <laughs> let's uh, let's dive right into it. So uh, this is a follow up to our previous. I think we had two previous meetings uh, on this subject in terms of changes to our tax incentive program. Uh, so the yellow highlighted uh, text is uh, new text and the, gr the gray highlighted text is text to be deleted. So I've, we've added content, but we've also, we're also moving some things uh, around just to make a little bit more sense. It's been uh, since 2004 that we revised uh, this document. So it's time for a change. And as we mentioned before, there are statutory changes that have occurred uh, over um, the years that we have not kept pace with. with. So, um, and, and we've talked, we talked previously about changing some of the policies as well. So the first uh, section one, the purpose statement, um, just some minor, minor changes. Um, I moved some of the eligibility, the section in gray, down to the section below. It seemed to make more sense. And then we just made sure that we referenced the appropriate uh, Connecticut General Statutes uh, 1265B and 1265H. So there's not a lot of, uh, not a lot of uh, changes to this. The only other thing that I did put in here, and I think it's important that you know, our tax uh, incentives are temporary. Um, and the, and the statutes use the term tax fixing. So we wanted to make sure that terminology got included in the purpose statement. Any uh, comments or questions on that section? Somebody likes it. Yeah, that's that's my daughter's dog Stanley. He's a yapper, so he must he's got something to say about everything. So, um, section two, this is the eligibility section. Um, the the ye the yellow uh, highlighted section here is taken right out of the statute. Uh, for some reason, the statutes talk about leasing uh, airspace, um, so um, we haven't had that experience here, but nevertheless, uh, I've incorporated the statutory lang language um, right out of the uh, statute. And then I've deleted the section below, uh, which, it, which is from our previous um, narrative about who is eligible in terms of ownership and lessees. So, um, and then the eligibility, the uses, the business types, once again, are taken right out of the statute. There, there were a few things that, that were um, added in the statutes. Hold on a second. I got to take care of that dog. Hold on. I know this is being recorded. No dogs were harmed during the conversation <laughs> of this tax incentive program. <laughs> I, I don't think I'll be able to report that. So he, he, he may be harmed. All right. he keeps it up. Um, so in terms of the statutory changes, they added number 11, which was mixed use development. They also added um, uh, use by, um, by or on behalf of the health system as defined in another section of the statute. So there are a couple of uses here. Uh, that were added over the uh, over the time frame. So, um, unless anyone feels strongly that some of these uses should not, not be eligible, uh, I've just once again taken the exact statutory language and inserted it here. Hey, one quick about question on item three under eligibility: you have consisting of four or more dwelling units. Is yep. that pretty standard with other towns? The number four. It's a that's the statute. That's the statute again. Okay. The way they put the statute together, that's uh, how they defined it. So um, there's a there's probably a legal question as to whether we can give out these tax incentives to other uses that may not be included in this list. Um, so I, I took the safe way out and just 
as I said earlier, took it right out of the statute. So that's how they that's how they word it in the statute. Uh, all right. Um, next couple of sections are very minor changes. Um, one thing I'm going to have to research is, is C. It says only a manufacturing facility or a wholesale and retail business uh, can qualify under 12-65B. I'm not real sure if, if the term wholesale and retail business applies to a specific type of business or, or whether it's wholesale and retail as a separate uh, use. So I'm, I'm going to have to make a note and, and see if I can find out what that actually means, because I'm not sure myself. You know, one last thing on recreation facilities. I'm looking at my notes from the last conversation. We were talking about what was that defined as? Is that, is that more defined in the statute or is that still kind of a kind of overarching, I don't know what a recreation facility. I'm not sure my, yeah, I'm not sure myself um, what that recreational facility means, but I'll make a note to uh, check that out. Okay, um, proceeding along, uh, I un under D, I wanted to make sure that somewhere in the eligibility section we we let people know based on our new uh schedule that a project uh has to have at least a hundred thousand dollar minimum uh impact uh to the town's grant list in order to qualify previously it was twenty five thousand dollars in investment but at the right. last meeting we agreed that the bottom threshold would now be a hundred thousand so if anyone has any strong thoughts about that. Okay, I'll move on to section three. Uh, this is the, the new um, schedule for what the minimum uh, investment uh, assessed value increases would be. Um, so this is uh, a pretty important section to talk about. Um, Let's see here. So, um, so I've, we've, we've deleted some provisions. Um, once again, um, the gray area is, was previously um, included in an earlier section. So I felt it was uh, appropriate to delete it from this section. And then we've um, basically added the language that um, previously the formula just talked about if you invested $25,000 worth of improvements, for example, you qualified. But really the way this tax incentive works, it's, it's the increased in assessed value that really qualifies you. So this section is being rewritten to define that and explain that in more detail. So previously, you know, as I said earlier, you could make a certain value of improvements to your property and you would qualify, but now we're changing the formula so that um, it actually is based on uh, what you do to increase the value of the property from an assessment point of view. Um, so we're also putting language in here that um, has some flexibility. So that sort of second half of that first paragraph, the percentage of the abatement may vary from year to year based upon the project needs, provided that the average percentage abatement shall not exceed maximum average percentage of the entire term of the agreement. So this provides flexibility so that if a developer wants to front load the incentive, he can do that. Or if he wanted to you know, average it out over a period of time, as long as over the entire term of the agreement, the uh, total averages um, are, are the same. We, we leave it, we allow the developer to negotiate with us as to how he wants to do those percentages. We didn't want to, I, I, we didn't think a, a one size fits all was really the way to go. So that is a significant change, Pete, on the, on the total cost of the project versus the assessed value. Um, Definitely. This is, this is, that's why I said at the beginning, it's, this is a big, a big uh, change from how we presently operate. 
So under the old plan, if it was a three million plus project, it was either negotiable or up to 20% of the increased assessment. All right, so at least that's getting, yeah, that's a, that's that's significant. How, you know, I'm, without getting into the weeds, how does this compare with other towns, Pete? I mean, I know I don't want to copy everything, but if somebody's got to figure it out someplace else, how does this relate to other towns, do you know? There are all the other all the other towns are really all over the place. <clears throat> there's no there's no consistency. The, the statutes used to actually include these specific formulas. Those formulas were taken out of the statutes probably four or five years ago. So they leave it up to the towns to determine how they want to manage their incentive program. So they've really kind of let it let it back to us as to how we want to. Um, to do this. And <clears throat> at the last meeting, if you remember, I provided you with all of our historical um, approvals, you know, how we've been doing this. And uh, we tried to come up with a, a formula, a revised formula that to a certain extent tried to mimic what we've done historically. So rather than looking at other communities, we really kind of assessed how we've done business in the past. And we've tried to match that up to a certain extent. And, and be a little and be reasonable about it. How would this, if you, if we could just take an, an example of the board and Peter and what we did for the board and how would that deal have been different? Um, because that project was obviously that was based upon the size of the of the project, right? Not just right. the increase of the assessed value. Yep. So, that so the board and I don't have the final numbers, but I I. Seem, seem to remember it was, um, you know, over a 20, it was more, more than a $20 million project. So it would be over the 15 million in this formula. Um, and we, I don't know that it were, the first couple of years were a hundred percent. So it may have averaged off, averaged out over the, the six years uh, to be, to be close, close to 50%. But I think it was more like, maybe more like, uh, in the in the in the fifties, um, I can I can certainly um, you know when we when we um, finalize all of this, I can you know put a PowerPoint presentation that includes you know all the previous slides that we discussed. But I think this new formula is is pretty consistent with what we've done, uh, not not just with the board but with some other projects as well. Okay, I just didn't, I, without knowing, the, the, I don't remember the details. I know I can go back and look for them, but I'm just yep. wondering, would it, would this new structure be a windfall for them or would it be significantly less or would it be kind of on the money that we're just restructuring? I know the percentages here are increasing um, based on what we have, um, which might offset it. I just was curious, just on that one project, how that would have affected that one project just because it's so so recent. Yeah, I think uh, what what happened over the years is that is we did not pay that much attention to the actual schedule that we had in place. We we negotiated with the uh, with the developers, and uh, but I think these numbers are you know right right in the right in the middle there. So okay. So the kind of imp the important one of the other important things is we we kicked up the minimum qualifying amount from 25, as you can see at the bottom there, to 100,000. So anything below that would not um, would not qualify. I don't think that's a, really a big problem. But most projects, you know, have invested and, and increased their assessed values, uh, maybe even more than this. So I don't think it will uh, create any ineligible projects, but it's just important to note we've, we've kicked up the bottom level. Great. Okay, let's move on. Um, uh, general requirements. Uh, I did um, at the bottom include some language that um, you know we include something about distressed or abandoned properties as being an important uh, criteria for us when we consider granting these. Uh, these agreements obviously we've been <clears throat> excuse me focused 
on some of our distressed properties. So we wanted to make sure that was uh, included in the criteria. It's funny, Pete, I had that that circled as well. The the I'm wondering if, and I'm just talking out loud, is that do we want to throw any more um, potential opportunities or sugar, if you will, to on those particular projects where we've got a distressed um, or abandoned property? Is there um, do we want to make people even more focused that there's maybe one other little uh, nicety in this plan for distressed? or abandoned properties. Um, I, again, I'm just talking out loud, but yep. just to get people focused on it, that if they're looking at it, you know, like the conversation we had with, with AJ yesterday, you know, if there's anything else out there that we could do within reason to make people excited about, it seems like the biggest eyesores we've got from a developer perspective are abandoned or distressed properties. So just, I just throw that out there. Maybe it's a non-starter. But I just didn't know what the, you know, do we want to focus on a little bit more um, juice for those particular scenarios? One thing that some other communities have done is they have included a criteria that states something to the effect that, you know, the project will implement recommendations of the plan of conservation and development or other approved, you know, municipal plans or you know something like that so that uh for example our plan of conservation and development has some of those redevelopment uh, ideas um we also have the silas dean highway master plan so um obviously if a developer is looking to implement a project that we have previously uh identified as being important i think that might be another valuable criteria to add Okay, that's cool. Um, in terms of application procedures, you can see we have we are suggesting that there be um, some clearer uh, guidance on what type of information we expect applicants to submit to us. So this is the uh, effort to do that. So we've asked for uh, I, I wouldn't say quite a bit of new information, but we're actually just clarifying the kind of information that we expect an applicant to submit to us for in order for us to make you know an appropriate decision so and this is i think consistent with what we've been actually receiving from applicants for the last few tax incentive proposals but we wanted we felt it was important to include those requirements in this uh, policy statement Um, I think it's a great list. Um, my question is, again, just going to the conversation we had yesterday um, regarding Weight Watchers, and they were kind of a would you if I could type of scenario, you know, looking for specific data. Um, will we still just have those casual conversations on with those potential developers on what they could be available for, without filing all this stuff? Uh, which I think is all important to information to have, but how, how, how detailed would we get with somebody who was just still kind of kicking a tire on a property, but was looking for incentive? I think, I think, I, I think you make, have? yeah, I think you make a good point. In some of our other uh, documents, we have established, you know, what they call a pre-application review process. So, which is, you know, what, we do quite often with uh, interested parties. We'll sit down with them and say, okay, what are you thinking about doing? And you know, going through a process of trying to, you know, we're not pre-approving them, but we're at least having a conversation about whether we think it's a, you know, worth, worth them putting together all of this information to submit. So we could add um, a pre-application provision in here that basically says we, we strongly encourage, you know, interested parties to meet with, it could be just town staff, or it could be the, you know, the EDIC uh, in general. Um, so I think that that would that's that's a good uh, that would be a good addition, I think. Because I think all this stuff is absolutely critical to have. <clears throat> um, but I, if if 
I would be for that type of pre-application process. I think that's a good policy that we've got currently uh, before people go through all the P and Z hoops and work and everything else. Um, yep. So if, you, if the if the group thinks that that's a, a plausible idea, then we should consider that, I think. Probably the question would be whether that pre-application would be with the tax incentive program review committee, uh, which is which includes people outside of the normal EDIC. So it's the town manager, the finance director, the assessor, the economic development manager, and then somebody from the EDIC, or should it be directly with the EDIC? Um, I or, probably, just, or just staff maybe. Yeah, I, I, I think, I don't think it's what you'd get to the EDIC level at that point. I think it's really more, they'd be staffing questions, I would think. That's my gut. Um, I mean, somebody in the EDIC could still be part of that group, but I think a lot of those questions would really be more from a staff response than, than somebody from EDIC. That's my feeling. Okay. I think staff doing it would help because uh, they also have access or knowledge on what the needs are going to be a design review committee and PNZ so they can get that included before this thing even goes further knowing whether we get accepted at that level too. Yeah, that's a good point, Tony. Okay. Uh, moving on to the next section, I just simply added the fact that the uh, applicant should attend the committee meeting, you know, to present their request that was not uh, in there previously. Obviously that makes, uh, we, and we have been doing that. We've had the developers come in and make the presentation. So I just simply added that language. Um, <clears throat> the town council also, <clears throat> we've added this provision that they will hold a public hearing on all requests. That has been the practice. Um, and um, the, um, let's see, the, yeah, and the council has allowed public comments on, on these agreements. So uh, that's a practice that uh, we've been following. It just wasn't documented in the policy. All right, moving on to section six. This has to do with the actual final agreement that we work out. Um, so once again, after the town council, uh, and this was not in there either. So uh, once the town council makes their decision, uh, we're specifying the town attorney will draft a written agreement and we'll work with the applicant on that. Um, and then we've got more language that the agreement shall include the appropriate terms and conditions of this policy and in particular the following. So we've just basically moved some things around and wanna make sure that these following provisions are actually ultimately included in the final agreement. I didn't make a huge number of changes here, but um, we're just clarifying that the final agreement needs to include some of these <coughs> about you know being, <clears throat> being up to speed on taxes and you can't sell the uh, sell the agreement without the town council's approval and, and some of the things that are already in there, but just we've moved them into a new section. I think one question on item five and the, the, the second to the last line, any and all de uh, delinquencies shall carry interest as if the taxes had not been uh, deferred. Is there a specific interest rate that's filed as part of this? Is this out of a statute or you know, is that an interest rate? Is it? I'm not sure what interest rate do they use, do you know? I don't know what that is. <clears throat> I don't, and I don't know if it, it you know, changes, you know, uh, depending upon uh, the specifics uh, or whether it's a statutory thing. So I kind of left that, left that detail out. Um, okay. I can find out certainly for you, but I'm not sure we should actually include the, the percentage in here, as I said earlier, because I'm not sure if it does change or, you know, it, it varies depending upon the specifics. You know, sometimes they just do things because you, you're right, rates can change. But I mean, it's throwing an example of three points over prime or, yep. you know, type some type of a schedule. Um, right. But that was it was more of a question or I was more interested in it than, than anything else. What that okay. would be. OK, uh, we have had some recent uh, experience with uh, projects that have received the tax incentive uh, in terms of 
but uh, regarding questions of when the clock starts and things like that. So uh, I've added some language in here to hopefully clarify some of those um, situations. The first one, number one, one of the tax deals was delayed because the planning and zoning uh, decision was appealed. And um, so it was unclear as to when the clock actually started. So we've added some language to, to clar clarify that. Um, we are deleting uh, on number three, delinquencies. Oh, once again, I'm sorry, let me take care of this again. Hold on. We've deleted num in number three, the delinquencies regarding water and sewer. Obviously that's an MDC thing. That's not a local, a local thing. So I'm not even sure why that was in there in the first place since we don't really have anything to do with that. Um, number, let's see, number seven. Uh, once again, we wanted to clarify because of our recent experience that the terms of the, uh, the tax deal go into effect the October October 1st grand list immediately following the uh, issuance of a CO. And then um, also, and this has been our practice during the construction phase, um, the assessment of the project is fixed, you know, locked in at the pre construction assessed value. So during construction, even if they make, you know, 90%. Um, improvements in the property, it still stays at zero until the until the uh, CO is issued. So we've added that language. <clears throat> Excuse me. And then lastly, the agreement will be executed by the town manager and the applicant. And then lastly, again, the agreement will be filed on the land records with the town clerk. Um, we're almost done here at the end. A lot of the, um, you know, without knowing, knowing everything about all projects, we've added some language in here that gives the council some flexibility um, to waive certain provisions of the policy as they see fit. So ultimately at the end of the day, it's the council's, you know, sole authority to decide what they want to do and what they don't want to do. So we've added language in here, which gives them clearly gives them uh, the authority. If there's some extraordinary circumstances that they can, you know, waive or modify some of the provisions of the policy. And uh, that is, uh, that's it. Peter, the only other change you have to make is you eliminated section seven. So you yeah, have to renumber. You have to yeah. renumber section eight and nine. Right. I caught that. I don't know if you did or not. Yeah, I didn't bother to change everything accordingly. Okay. But since this was our first draft, I wanted to. Right. So we'll go. We'll go back and make. There's probably a couple other little ones like that too that I gotta. I gotta catch. Okay. Good morning. So I think I. Oh, Leslie. Yeah. Uh, yeah. On page three, I was looking at uh, tax abatement schedule under CGS yep. 1265 H yep. on the right hand side where it says up to two years. Is that yep. consistent with everything else that we've said? Because up above it was some places two years and some places three years. Yep. So that's actually that's that one is right out of the right out of the uh, statutes. Uh, unlike uh, the 1266, uh, six, let's see, uh, unlike 1265B, um, 1265H actually kept the formulas in there. So this is um, matching that formula. Okay. It's, Thank you. it's strange, but I'll, but I will make a note and confirm that. Are you saying there's something in government is strange? Is that what <laughs> and inconsistent, perhaps? <laughs> Every day. Mm -hmm. So, Pete, the only thing I would ask, and I don't, I, hopefully it's not that big, big of an exercise, is that I think what you've done that on the, the new schedule, I think, look, is pretty thoughtful. And I think a lot of it's based on what we talked about a couple of months ago. 
I really would like to just know how the Borden deal would be affected under the new process here. How much sure. different or of an incentive would they would they have gotten more or less? I'm just curious on that one example, and that would be the only thing I'd ask if you wouldn't mind taking yep. a peek at that. Yeah, as I say, I do have that in in I think the last one of the last slides from our last meeting, so I can certainly uh, uh, provide that. I was I was going to put this on the uh, agenda for next next week's meeting. And obviously I can have all that information when we talk. I think it's pretty thoughtful, Pete. Um, anybody have more questions or concerns or um, pickups like Tony had on numbering? Obviously you've had your coffee today, Tony. Um, Still drinking it. Okay. <laughs> Okay. And I think it covers, you know, everything we've previously talked about, but obviously it's just the first draft. So uh, there's plenty of time for us to, uh, you know, incorporate any additional changes, but I think this covers the main, obviously the formula is the big, is the big one. Um, but once again, uh, there's language in there that would allow the town council, you know, to, to vary the, the schedule or, you know, the schedule is a guideline. And so, but we wanted to have something, you know, that actually, you know, ties back into what we've been doing historically. So we're not, you know, bringing something in out of left field and it, and it gives the developers, you know, more guidance as well. So when they come in with an application, it'll be based on our past practice. Got it. Did you just kick the dog? It sounds like you just kicked the dog. But no, he's uh, sp he's spread out on the couch enjoying himself. I'm not sure what he's barking at now. All right. Um, well, this is good, Pete. Any other questions from the group on this? Oh. I've got nothing else, Pete. Okay. Uh, do you have anything else to add, sir? No, I will um, uh, clean this up so that... Um, and distribute it with the uh, packet for next uh, week's meeting with a, mem a summary memo, just kind of highlighting the main changes. And then uh, we'll discuss it at the meeting and then uh, see where this ends up going. Ultimately, uh, this will go to council for their uh, consideration. So we can talk about that at, at the next meeting in, in terms of timing and everything like that. So great. Good. Has the town manager reviewed this yet? Uh, he was given a copy. I haven't received any specific comments from him yet, but uh, hopefully he'll have time to, to take it all in and so that maybe at next Thursday's meeting we'll get some comments from him. Very good. Okay, thank you, sir. Okay, guys. We'll, um, thank you. Thanks for your time. We'll see, see you next week. Yep. All right. Okay. Good job, Pete. Bye. Thank you, Pete. Bye. Take Thank care. Thank you. Bye-bye. Have a good day, everyone. You bye too. Bye.